Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here and welcome to my channel. So if you're new here, we solve a lot of problems on this channel and today we're going to be looking at the isomorphic strings problem. So I'm going to show you two solutions for this problem and the second one is a little bit more tricky so I want to start off with the easier solution. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that really helps me create these amazing content for you guys. Awesome, so let's go ahead and dive right in. What this question is asking uh, when it says isomorphic strings is that we're given two strings here s and t and what we need to figure out is if there is a way to map each um, letter in s to each letter in t and if they're consistent or not okay so let me use an example to explain um, what this means so let's say this is s and this is t um, so in S, we have E here, and this maps to, um, so we are given two strings like egg and add, okay? So now what we need to figure out is, is it consistently mapping to the second string? So if the first string E here maps to A, um, then what should happen is if we see another E here, it should also map to A. Like they need to mirror each other's mapping. So that's essentially what the question is asking. So here we can see that G is mapping to D. Again, G is mapping to D. And if all of this maps, that's good. We just return true. Otherwise, we return false if it doesn't, if there's a mismatch in the mapping. Okay, so one of the things that um, the first solution that comes to mind when we see a problem like this is, okay, we need to do some kind of mapping. So a hash map is a good candidate for this. Okay, awesome. So I'm back in the code and what I've done here is I've initialized the S map and T map. And now what I'm going to do is iterate over um, the string S. And remember, we only need to iterate over uh, one string because they're the same size. So we can just access each of the characters um, by just iterating over one um, string. And if they're not the same size, it will go into this if statement and return false. Oh, I have a typo here, false. Um, because then they can't be isomorphic. So we already know the answer. All right, so what I'm going to do is have my for loop. So for, you can say i in range, and it's going to go from zero to the length of s. Okay, um, and now we're going to access each of the elements in both the strings. So we can say, um, s mm, character equals s at that index and we can say t character equals t at that index okay awesome so we have that and I know there's a way to use zip to associate each of the items but I just prefer doing it this way. Um, let me know if you have used zip before or um, you have some other solution to solve this um, in the comments below. Um, but I just want to go with what I'm most comfortable uh, doing and something I will remember, obviously. So with that, um, okay, so we have each of the elements now. And what I'm going to do now is I will Mm, go over okay so I have the elements and now I need to map them so I will check if um, if this exists in the map or not so if the s character um, not in the s map then I'm going to map it so I will say s map s c h and I'm going to set that as the T character. So what we're doing here is we're taking this S, so this P, and we're mapping it to this T character, right? So I can say T C H. Okay. Um, all right. So that's good. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the T character. So if T C H not in T map. Um, then what I'm going to do is map that. So we'll say tmap 
add that index of tch is going to be the s character right so we are doing this one now so t is mapping to p right and the last step we're going to do is make sure that this whatever this is mapped to is equal to this p right so we're just going to compare this key with this value and this this key with this value and if there's a mismatch then we know that they're not mapped properly um okay so to do this we can say if t map th is not equal to a ch or if the S map character is not equal to T C H, right? So if this is the case, then I'm going to go ahead and return false. Okay. Um, otherwise, we know that all the mappings are correct, and we can safely return true that these two strings are isomorphic so we can say return true okay let me just check this syntax yeah okay looks good so i'm gonna run it okay awesome accept it and then i'm gonna go ahead and submit yay awesome it works now we're at the second part of the solutioning and this is a little more tricky so don't worry if you didn't understand it first so hopefully I can shed some light and clarify this solution. Uh, so the basic idea here is that we are going to create um, two arrays and what this is going to help us do is um, use the indexing already available from the ASCII characters um, to apply to this problem. So what do I mean by this? So if you represent um, A in ASCII, uh, that will give you 97, right? So that is the index that is used to um, convert each letter into ASCII. So here we have, like if we have an array here starting from um, zero to including all the symbols, lower capital cases up to 128, and somewhere around here is where uh, A starts, right? So lowercase a is at 97 position, right? So what we can do is use this to our advantage and use this indexing to tell us, okay, can we match the counts of the character mappings? So that's essentially what we're doing, big picture. Now let's dive into an example and see case by case how this would work. Um, okay, so I'm going to take the same example as um, the first example in the problem, which is where S is egg and um, T is add. Okay, so what we can do is if we were to iterate over this, we can see that, okay, well, E um, maps to 101 here. So that's the index for E. So somewhere over here um, where we have 101 is going to be this e and if we initialize this list um, with all zeros so what we can do is we can just increment the count here from zero to one so that's now a one um, and then we will also go to um, the t and at the t at position 97 which you can see here the count will also be one so we incremented these two right and you can see that currently E is mapped to A. That's why their both counts are 1 and 1. And this is what we're comparing, right? So we're comparing the counts of each of the um, elements as they occur. So we're doing one by one. Okay, next item is G. So G is, uh, I think that is 103. Yeah, okay. Yeah, E, F, G. Okay, so yeah, so that's correct. Uh, so at 103 now, okay, so we're at 103, um, and what we're going to do is we will take this current index, which is currently 1, so we're at position 1 now, and we're going to map this index um, 
we're gonna add one to this count. So we'll take the, so what we're saying is, okay, at index one, this is the mapping we have. So we're going to add one here. And this is going to give us at 103 position, we will have two. And then at the second one, D, which is at position 100, okay? And our index is still two because we are going one by one, right? So that will also be two. And these two are equal, so we're good. And then we move on to the third case where again, we are at index um, two now, right? So we are here. So we're at index two and we're going to um, add one to this. So G again, the same spot is 103. So now this is going to be two plus one, which is three, right? So that's how you get three. And here again, um, if we, um, uh, see, check this D here, we are going to add one more to its current index, which is two plus one, which is three. Okay, great. So now everything is mapped up and all the counts are equal. Okay, now let's take a case where the counts would not be equal. Um, so if I added another S here um, at this index three, right? And if I added a D here, right? So D is already mapped to G, right? So um, this breaks the uh, isomorphic quality of this string. So this is a test case that should fail and we should return false for this. So when we have this D here, we're going to go again and um, check this uh, position here. So at position 100, um, this is three, right? So that's the current position. Okay, so we have position three. And if we look here at this S, so S is 115, right? So here, the index, the count is zero, right? So zero is not equal to three, right? So this is how we know that, okay, this is not an isomorphic string because if they were equal, um, their counts of at each position would have been equal. So that's the basic idea behind this second solution. Uh, I hope this helps you understand how to um, apply the ASCII codes to solve this type of problem. So let's go ahead and look at the code. Okay, awesome. So I'm back in the code and I'm going to show you the second solution um, that we discussed using the ASCII keys as index. So what I'm going to do is, okay, so I have my edge case here, like if the strings are not the same length, just go ahead and return false. Otherwise, what we can do is iterate through um, our string s. So say for s for i in range from 0 to len s. Okay. And we can go ahead and grab each of the character codes um, of the string S and T. So I will say, um, we can say um, S IDX. So S index is going to be um, ORD, which will give you the character code for that um, specific string, right? So for that character. So this is going to be um, the, the index we are at. So right now, like if we are at um, E, it's going to return us 101. So that's what we're getting here, right? And we can have T IDX is going to be where T is in that loop, right? So, okay. Okay, so now we have each of the character codes and now we just need to compare um, the counts. So um, what I'm going to do is say if, or no, we don't, we don't need a if, we're just going to increment the counts when we see them. So we'll say, um, oh, I need to define my lists here. So I will use list comprehension to create this. So I can say S A R. So these are just going to be the 
um, empty, let's call this list. So these are just going to be the empty lists filled with zeros and it's going to go from um, 0 to 127. So that's 128 um, characters uh, to index by. So that's representing all of these, right? So uh, I will say, I will use list comprehension for this. So I can say 0 for um, range do do 128 okay this should work and t list to same thing okay great so now we have our empty uh, lists with zeros and what we're going to do now is um, every time we are at that index and we have a character we will increment um, the index by one so for example here you can see when we were at um, index one so we added plus one to account for this g here right so g is here and um, we added one here and then we added one again at index two. So we will do that here um, so we can access, so we can say s list at the index of s index is going to be the current index it's at plus one. Right, so plus one. And same thing with the t list. So t list at t index and that is going to be i plus one okay. okay so this looks good so every time we are encountering um, that index we will add one to keep count of uh, what occurred like how many um, of that same character is there right and the way we will find the mismatch is, for example, here, if we have, um, you know, no values for s, right, so s is 0, and if we add a d here, that's going to be um, index uh, of 3 already, so d is going to be index 3, so 0 does not equal to 3, right, so that's how we can say, okay, well, this is not mapped correctly. So to do that um, in the implementation, I can say if um, so if the count that's present in that uh, place in the array is not equal to this count, okay, then we're going to go ahead and return false. no semicolons okay uh, return false otherwise we will go ahead and outside this loop we will return true that means all the items are mapped correctly and their counts match so otherwise we will return true okay, okay so looks good um, I'm going to go ahead and run Okay, awesome. So that works. And then submit. Yay, accepted. Awesome.